So again, we're not going to go into it here because we've covered it elsewhere many times. Rakovetsky talks about the primacy of the spine, right? The spine is the source of all development. In the womb, we develop tendrils in the spine first, then it builds outwards to the arms. As a child, we come out of the womb, we first learn how to use our spine to raise our head, then we slowly activate our limbs. And likewise, in motor learning, if I look at playing the piano, if I correct my spine first and have the greatest posture, the rest of my limbs and leaves will operate as effectively as possible. If I look at Roger Anoka's work, and I look just from a neuromechanical point of view, the same proves to be consistent, but from a different perspective. We look at reflex, reflex is felt and processed fastest and first in the spine, always. The spine is really a nervous highway. Then it goes to the brainstem, and then finally to the motor cortex. We can function at a spinal level alone with very little input from anything else. We can gain improved function with activation of the brainstem. And if the motor cortex is there, we can have fully harmonious function in an upward feed-forward loop. The two examples is what's called passive dynamic locomotion. There's actually very little part of the brain involved. And I'm going to give you the two most clear and yet disgusting examples humanly possible, yeah, both from Anoka. The first is there is a very famous case, uh, as vegan, it's my preferred viewing, if you go home and you Google or YouTube, Mike the Headless Chicken. There was a chicken in the 40s uh, that was beheaded for supper, but not correctly. And so the chicken's head was cut off and it runs around as is common the case with the chicken, but there was just a little bit of the motor cortex left and just part of its ear, which gave it vestibular function. The chicken lived for 18 months. It became a phenomenon. People came, they tested it, they thought it was a hoax, it was a tourism site first, and then finally was brought to a university for testing. It had just part of its vestibular cavity and the base of the motor cortex. And so the chicken was able to right itself, know the limitations of the coop, run around on its regular habit, pecking, eating through its engorged neck flume. Yeah, and it lived. It lived, but more importantly, it was able to have complete motor awareness of its environment. More disgustingly, in the 1920s, uh, if, you, if you YouTube cerebrated cats, they used to take cats long before rats were the norm for pharmacological testing. And what they would basically do is take out the majority of its brain. And then the cat was suspended on two screws through the spine, right near the, the skull and at the base near the tail. So the cat was suspended. If a treadmill was placed under the cat at a walking gait, the cat would walk. If it was accelerated, it would jog. If it was accelerated fully, the cat would run. So it could have three variable gates in response to what was underneath it. Cats were kept alive in this state, vegetative yet functioning, for years. Yeah, as gross as that, yeah? And there is video of it, and you can see it. As gross as all of that is, what it shows us is that the body responds to the environment with very little brain involvement everything that you do, right? If I talk about, normally we talk about balance as being a function fundamentally of the eyes referencing the horizon line and the vestibular fluid in the ears, right? But a third very, very important function, and then we're gonna look at that now throughout the week, is the, the role of mechanoreceptors in the body. Because for example, the fluid in my ears can tell that my head is out of alignment. But it's all the awareness of my environment, even without eyes, that can tell if my head is sideways or forward or at an angle because I can feel all the variations in my neck. And we feel cutaneously through the skin, we feel through the hair on the arms, we feel through heat and temperature, proximity. Anytime you see any sort of chi magic being performed and detection and sensing at a distance, it's all of those mechanoreceptors being brought into play, collectively being called intuition, right? But subconsciously being processed. So if we look at Mike the Headless Chicken or the many, many cats that were made to run treadmill, brainlessly, there's something to be said there, um, <laughs> we see that the body itself has tremendous capacity for processing. And arguably, they're processing at a higher level because there's no risk of interruption. But if we look at that in our mechanical awareness, in our training, we go back to Anoka's comment, how do we reprogram reflex or improve movement? It's by continued exposure to the stimuli. It's the only way. So now we're gonna go forward into one of our most basic basic, 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 basic mechanics on the ground, and that is the circular sit-up. So I can perform it from a shin box or from a straight leg. Now it's all the same mobility that was required of us to walk, but there's no pressure to walk. Now it's the inverse. Now I want to absorb. When I go down, I know that I want to have my chin low to the chest to protect the head and take the leverage off the spine. 
I want to greet with the meat of the spine, and then rather than rule taut and round across my spine, it's the same action of walking, but very soft. And so my shoulders are taking that little step with no, no pressure to walk. I'm going down and I'm greeting with the shoulder, and I'm walking to the other. And that basic motion, I want to see now what happens if I go too much to the side, if I go high, if I go deep, if my shoulder's impinged, and I want to play with the mobility of my shoulders, we might have a habit. Maybe the habit just happens to be the best way you could possibly use your shoulders. Chances are it's not. Chances are there are some tightnesses in there, some stiffnesses, some corners in your circle we can get rid of. So the idea here is I want to play with every possible position of my trunk, my shoulders, my arms, my legs, and look at that circle sit up. There's no wrong or right way. I want to feel getting up and going down. And what's the real challenge of this work? I want to always have a good braced stomach. Most of the time people go down, oh, I pull some of my rib, because they are unbraced, right? And so I should have that compression. Going down is not too bad, but coming up, this is the whole reason, right? It's shown but not taught. In Sistema, you'll see that straight back sit up. If you perform the straight back sit up as a as an exercise where I say sit up and keep breathing, then invariably you're going to have that. You're going to curve because that's how your body's designed to get up, counterbalance. And now if I'm bloating outwardly or if I'm <laughs> collapsing too much, it gets very tough. But if by comparison I stay here and I think of that, I'll be aware of my trunk. It's not bloating. It's always in stasis wherever I go. And so I should be able to raise up on an inhalation or an exhalation. If I maintain that awareness and I soften it slightly to an angle, that's the whole point. If I hold my breath in doing it, that's the complete opposite of the point. If I bloat my face, strain the anus, looks similarly the same, on the outside looks familiar, looks it's not at all. It's the complete opposite of the work. I want to have comfortable breathing. I'm contracting, inhaling and exhaling as I talk. I have to exhale to let the breath out, but I'm still able to inhale to continue talking, and I keep going. I little, little, inhale that long, exhaling as long as I need to, but always feeling that the trunk is engaged, right? I run out of breath here. I take a half second, a third of a second inhalation, I'm able to go. That's what I need to have. I need to have stasis in the body, and I should have the ability to find my counterbalance, but it's always from that plunge. As soon as I don't brace my core correctly, blockage. Make sense? So just rediscovering that circle set. Feel it.